As a contractor and an electrician, one of my biggest pet peeves is older homes that don't have enough light switches. Here we go. Hey everybody, I'm Bill with Live Simple Live Free. Light switches, not enough of them, drives me crazy. And our current home is no exception. This home was built in 1970 and it doesn't have enough light switches. Now, if it was built in 1910 without electricity, and then it was later retrofitted to put some electric in it, then I would understand. But certainly in 1970, they had the understanding of electricity and the technology to put in more than one switch in a room. I just don't understand it. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So here is our living room. It of course has one overhead light. There are two switches right there. One goes to the overhead light, the other one goes to the outside light. But that's the only switch in the entire room. So when you go over here into the rest of the house, there's no switch there anywhere. So what that means is that uh, if you walk into the living room and it's dark, you have to come from there and stumble all the way over to here to turn the light on. Or if you're in here in the evening and you're going to bed, you got to go over there, turn the light off, and then stumble through a dark room this way because there's no way to turn it off over here. The hallway is the same way. There's one light right there, one switch right here. Now the bedrooms, all three of them, or down at the other end and the light is here. So if you get up in the middle of the night you got to go to the bathroom or whatever there's no light switch down there so you're going to stumble through the dark to get to the bathroom. Now we did put in a uh, night light right there which helps but that's not the point. The point is to turn the light on you got to stumble through the dark to come to this switch. It's crazy there should be a switch here and another switch down there. And then in the kitchen this is the one that really drives me nuts. We have two lights one there in the kitchen, one right up here in the kitchen sitting dining area. Now the switch for that light is here. And the switch for the other light up here, for that one, is over by the door behind the refrigerator right there. So when you come in at night the only light you can turn on is that one. You can't turn on the one in the kitchen. And then <clears throat> you have to walk over here to turn on the other one. And then at night when you're going to bed, you have to turn that one off over there to get this off and then walk through the dark. It's crazy. Another thing is this switch is so far back from the corner that it's hard to reach. Now, for those of you who have, who have been around my channel for a while, you might recognize this shelf. That was the, the shelf that I built custom size just to fit all of my Thrive Life cans when we lived in the tiny house. And this was just the width of our tiny house and it went across the end uh, below the windows in the living room. And when I brought it down here, I just put it there to hold the cans. But as you can see, it's too long. Now I'm, I'm going to rebuild it, but I'm kind of waiting until I redo the kitchen. You know, I told you about the problem with the kitchen that the cabinets are all too narrow and there's no shelves anywhere. I mean, there's no drawers anywhere. We got these here because there's no drawers. So we want to remodel the kitchen and I'm going to put cabinets across here. And then the Thrive shelf I'm going to rebuild instead of going this way. It's going to go up and it'll go from there all the way up to the ceiling and then that'll give room over here for more counters. Problem is I can't really do that yet because I don't know how wide or how far the counters will come down. I have to wait until I remodel the kitchen to see where the cabinets end so that I know how wide to make that shelf. 
So in the meantime, this sticks out. It sticks out in the way. It's kind of a pain. There's room to go around, but that means it's very difficult to reach that light switch. So when you come from the hallway to turn on the kitchen light, you've either got to reach all the way like this to try to find it, or you've got to stumble all the way around in the dark past here to reach it. It's just not really workable. It'd be a little better if this wasn't here, but it's not really workable. So here's my plan. I'm going to have to cut into the wall a little bit here to do that. Fortunately, it's sheetrock, so I can patch it. And at any rate, it'll be behind the, the uh, cabinet that I put there eventually. But I'm going to cut in there so I can do some rewiring, and I'm going to take that switch, and I'm going to move it over to right here. So it'll be very easy to just hit that as you come in and out of the hallway. I'm also going to put in a second switch to work the other light over there. Now that will take a three-way wire so that this light, this switch, will tie in over there. But I'm not going to be tying it in until I do more work over there. For now, I'll just put, I'll just put the switch there, put the switch in, and let the wire go down into the crawl space and just hang down there for later so it can be hooked up later. So that initial explanation was actually much longer than I expected it to be, but at least now you understand what I'm doing and why. Okay, so I got one stud right here that this is nailed to. And another stud right here, I can see a couple of the nail spots right there. So I will cut out a section right here and I'll put the new box right next to this stud, of course facing the other direction. I'd like to get it a little closer to the corner, but I can't because of that stud. So I'll put it right there facing into the hallway. Now I could use a uh, reciprocating saw, saber saw, to cut this out. It would be very fast and easy, but I don't know what's back there. And I don't want to cut through any wires or anything like that that I can't see. So I'm going to have to use a utility knife. I just went over there and turned off the power to this switch so it's no longer hot. take this out carefully so that I can reuse it. I can put it back in there and spackle over it because otherwise I would have to go down and buy an entire sheet, four by eight foot sheet of sheetrock just for this one little piece and I didn't want to do that. So this will work to go right back in there. Now this is an electrical box that you use for new construction. You use these nails here to nail it into the stud, then you run the wires, then you run the sheetrock over it. 
there's no way here to be able to get it in there to nail it into the stud. So what we use is something called an old work box. This is a double gang, there's two switches, there's no nails. It's got this little flap right here. And you cut the hole, slide it into the hole, and then when you screw that, it brings this up, and then it brings this, as you continue to screw it, it tightens it up against the back of the sheetrock, and it clamps it right there. And there's one there, and there's one down here. And then there's these little tabs that hold it against the outside. This is actually paneling, but it holds it against the outside of the wall. So this is an old work box. That's what I'll be using here. So I have to trace the hole that I need to cut. Because I cut the hole in the other side of the wall, I know there's no wires or anything back here that I have to be concerned with, so I can just go ahead and cut it. Unfortunately, the saw scraped up this paint a little bit. I'm hoping that uh, it'll wash off because I don't have any more of this green paint. So as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be running two wires from here over to the door where the other switch is so that I can have a switch on both sides for both lights. And to do that, I needed to run two wires from the switch up here down through the crawl space. So I'm just going to cut a, a hole right here so that I can get my drill in there and drill down through the, uh, the bottom plate of the, of the wall and get the wires in there. Since I already cut out, out this hole up above, I know there's nothing in there, so I don't need to worry about hitting anything. So I'm just going to use the, the saw. So now that I got the hole cut here, I was going to drill a hole down through the plate down here just so I could run it into the crawl space. But there's already a hole there where somebody had drilled there to run a wire through and then never did. And the, the wall, the hole goes all the way into the crawl space. So I don't even have to drill a hole. So I got two, two wires here that are just long enough to go down in there and then I'll put a junction box to end them down there so it's not dangerous. And then I can tie into that junction box later to run the wire the rest of the way over to where the other switch will be. that I can run both of these wires through the one hole so I don't even have to drill anything that's kind of cool so now I got the wires in here I got these two that go down those two that go down to the bottom and then this one which will run over to here and you can see down here the two wires that go down through that hole down into the crawl space.
Okay, so I got the three wires in there. Got it in place, now I just screw it down and it clamps onto the back side of the wall there. Alright, mount it tightly in place. Now, I'm not going to get into all the details of how to do the specific wiring, primarily because if you don't know what you're doing and you do it wrong, you could start a fire. And uh, so if you are trying to do this yourself, unless you know what you're doing, hire somebody who knows what they're doing. Because if you do it wrong, like I said, you could start a fire. But I will say that this wire is a 12-2, it's a 12 gauge wire. It's a 12-2, it means it's got two wires, black and white, and then it's got the ground. This one is the one that goes for the three-way switches that go to the other side. And this is 12-3 wire, instead of 12-2 like this. This is 12-3, which means it has a black and a red and a white along with the ground. And I have two of those. Those are the ones that go down through the floor. And what I'm going to do here is just curl these up, get them out of the way, because they're not going to be hooked up right now. They're a little bit too long. These will not be hooked to the switches, they'll just be curled up in the back, ready to go when I'm ready to do the switches. So this is the working switch, and then this one is just a dead switch for now until I do the other work and get this one hooked up for the other side. So I got the relay wires in the back that aren't connected, and this switch that's not connected, it's just a placeholder, but this one will be active as soon as I turn it all back on.
This then just becomes a junction box. This is the old wire that went to the switch. This is the new wire. All I'm doing is going to hook those together and extend the power through to the new box. And then this gets covered with a blank plate. So now you can see I have the original power coming in this black wire using the wire nuts to connecting together go out to the yellow wire to go into the new box over here. So now I'm finished with the wiring. So I've turned the power back on. Let's see what happens with the light. There we go. It's working. Hallelujah. It's going to be so much easier. Well, good. Most of this is coming off. I was afraid I was going to have to get some, try to find some paint to match it. I'll work a little more on that later. It is coming off, so that's good news. So now I got all the wiring done, I'm ready to patch this back in. And because I cut this out, instead of just taking a hammer to it or something like that, I can actually put this piece right back in here again. Now it did break out a little bit here, but I'll be able to fill that with spackle and it'll be fine. The way I attach this back in there, anytime you put in a patch in construction it's called a scab. So I have these scabs that I made, just two pieces of wood. And I'll just screw one in behind here, like this. Then I put another one in on the bottom. And then that gives me something to screw this piece of sheetrock to. So now that piece of sheetrock is patched solid right back in there. It's not going anywhere. All I have to do is just put tape and spackle to seal that up and paint it. I'll be good to go. So that's how you patch a hole in a sheetrock wall using scabs from behind. So I've got that patched in. You can also see that I've got the one in the bottom patched back in again.
Okay, so I now have three coats of, of spackle on here. And spackling a wall is actually fairly easy, but at the same time, it's really difficult because it's an art, it's a skill that you have to develop over time. And when I first, just like painting, you have to develop it. When I first started, I did a coat and then I would sand every coat before I would do the next coat. But over the years, I just developed, I kept trying to uh, get to the point where I didn't have to do any sanding at all. And I'm just about there. This is three coats, I haven't done any sanding. And when you just look at it like this, it looks completely smooth. When I put a light on it, I don't know if the camera's gonna pick this up or not, but there are just a few slight imperfections here. So I do have to sand it only after the third coat. And it's a very light sanding. Most of it is around here where it's harder to get it smooth because of the uh, light switch there, the box. So that's it. It's all the sanding that's required. So I've got this spot done and as you can see I also have that spot patched in on the bottom. I'm very fortunate because I don't have any more of this yellow paint. I would have to try to figure out exactly what color that was and go buy a quart or something. But I'm very fortunate because until I do that, that it's kind of, since the yellow is a light color, kind of blends in. I mean, you can still see it, but it's not like right in your face. So there it is, it's all patched in, all done, except for the yellow paint. And now I see that I got the wrong color blank cover here. I got an ivory one and I should have gotten a white one. The other ones are white, so I can easily replace that as well. Then I've got the switch right there. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you found it helpful. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time. Live simple, live free, you be blessed.